All right, I hope you've enjoyed part one of handling haters. My only goal is to make you a tougher, more mentally resilient individual who can go out there and be the badass person that you were created to be. Handling the haters. Always choose logic over emotion. If you cannot respond with logic, you're better to not respond at all. Great idea. And sometimes, even when you can respond to logic, you're better off not to respond at all. Respond with logic. Do not, I repeat, do not allow yourself to get all emotional, all worked up, all out, because that's the number one thing that is gonna happen. When somebody comes up and they offend you, and they talk mean to you, and they talk bad to you, and they do all this stuff to you. Are you trying to hurt my feelings? Because if so, you are succeeding. Your number one thing that you're gonna do is like, you're gonna let them know what you think. I'm gonna get up in their face. I'm gonna get mad. Arr. But truth be known, if you take a step back, you separate yourself from emotion, seed yourself in logic and respond from logic. Then when you have a logical mind, you're able to think about all these things. They're responding based on their experiences. You're responding on your terms and when you respond with logic. That makes a lot of sense. You know how you feel about yourself. You're not gonna allow what they say to weigh you down. It's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna choose to let that happen. You know what? I've thought about this. I've thought about this ahead of time. And it's really pretty simple actually to do. Most of the time people get mad at me for saying what I think or standing up for what I believe in my God, my country. I love my country. I love good manners. I like people to say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. People that are just kind and courteous. I love it. And so if I choose to respond in emotion when somebody, some lady says to me, don't say man to me, that makes me feel old. Don't say that. Now I could choose to get mega emotional and be like, listen lady, I respect you, leave me alone, blah, blah, blah. Or I could go home, I could just smile and say, okay, sorry. Walk away and then look at it on a different lens and say, you know what? This person wasn't raised in this same morals, ethics, and values that I was. Maybe they weren't raised in a good home at all. Maybe they're insecure about age. And because the old people, when they were kids, were set called ma'am, they think they're old whenever they hear that. And so what I would tell you is, choose to respond in logic, always, not in emotion. Emotion is good to get the ball rolling, but it's not good when you're feeling threatened or feeling upset or feeling in that point where somebody's just like blasting you. So if you can't respond with logic, do not respond with emotion. If you can take like two seconds and just feel like, I'm good, I got this, let's go. Then respond with logic. And it takes some training, guys. It takes a mental fortitude. That's why this is mental toughness training. This is something that nobody's teaching. Very few people are teaching. Recognize that haters feed off low energy people. Now we're going to them. We're gonna look at the low energy people out there, okay, which are typically the haters, by the way. But haters feed off other people who vibrate on a lower level. And so when you project yourself as confident, when you project yourself with energy, when you project yourself as going out and chasing your dreams, it makes it much harder for these haters to come at you. You understand that? If you're walking around, it's like, I don't know. You're not making eye contact. You're looking down. I don't know what to do. I'm kind of, you know, I, I should do this or do that. You see how that low energy is so much easier of a target? Especially, especially if they feel threatened at all. Maybe you're at your office and you've got a new job and somebody else in the office feels threatened by you coming into that new position. Or maybe somebody else has been winning everything at the rodeos and you're coming up and you're starting to win a little bit more. If you're low energy and not vibrant and not rolling at a whole nother level, you are gonna be an easy target for that person. Just don't make yourself such an easy target. On the flip side, we can choose our energy. And you say, you know, Tyson, I just, you know, I, I'm quiet. I don't like to talk. I don't want to be out there. So what? Stand up with confidence. Put your shoulder back. Put your chest out. Get out there and show that you're a force to be reckoned with. It doesn't always have to be with a million words or, or anything like that. But the way you walk, the way you hold your head, the way you hold your chin, the way you respond to people, that shows high energy. That shows strength. That shows courage. And when you emit that kind of stuff off, these guys can't attack. Because they know, they know, they know, they know, they know that if they attack, who cares? I don't care. Just choose to be like, I don't care about that shit, bro. Whatever you say, whatever you do, it does not bother me because I'm operating at such a high level 
and I'm so mentally tough and I'm so confident in who I am and I've worked on myself so much and I do everything on my terms. Whatever you say, it does not matter. And I'm not gonna play that replay game because that's what a low confidence individual does. So remember that haters find the weakest target. Don't be that weak target. Stand up, stand up for yourself. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, let's you and me make a deal. Let's shake hands. Yeah, that good, firm cowboy handshake. If you like this video, do me a favor, share it with somebody. Subscribe to the channel. And my end of the bargain, I will bring you everything I know about being a high performer, a world champion, and an entrepreneur. If that sounds like a fair deal, go and hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment too, because I'm gonna answer every single comment that comes in on this video. Emotional reactions feed their fire. If you're responding out of emotion, which we know not to do, you're feeding their fire. You're feeding their flame. You've made an opportunity for them to come and capitalize on your problems. So if they come at you and they're like, oh, I can't believe you did this, you're such an idiot. I'm not an idiot, I'm not, I, I didn't do that. And you maybe make a scene or you do it in front of people, then all of a sudden it's like, oh man. And that person, they got exactly what they wanted. You don't do that. You're a winner, you're a champion. And I say this over and over and over again because I want it to sink into your brain. You are a winner, you are a champion everything on my terms. Say that to yourself over and over and over again. If you respond out of emotion, you're just feeding their flame. You're pouring gasoline on the fire. Did you hear what they said about me? And then guys, I could keep going and going and going and going on this because I've had this thing happen to me a lot. But at the end of the day, if you work on yourself and you know, you know that you're a good person, you know that you're trying, you don't have to have it all figured out, but you do have to know that you're working on yourself. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to think, oh man, I gotta get it all figured out. I gotta be the perfect weight. I gotta be this fast. I gotta be winning this match. No, you just have to be working on it. If you're working on yourself and you're constantly growing, these guys ain't gonna be able to come at you. You have the opportunity to reject or accept whatever it is this person throwing at you. Guys, so much of mental toughness is what we choose to accept. I was told numerous times that I was dumb as a box of rocks. I was told numerous times that I would never amount to anything. I was in every learning disability class there was in school. I'm talking math, I'm talking language arts, I'm talking half the day I spent in what was called LD classes, learning disability classes. Plus I was told I was not intelligent. Now, the difference is, I chose to listen to one person. When I was little, I'm talking 10, 11, 12, you know, even younger, because I was always, you know, learning was hard for me. It was hard for me to sit still in class. My mother would say to me, Tyson, you're special. Tyson, you are gonna make something out of yourself. Tyson, you are gonna help so many people. I don't know what it is, but you're gonna help so many people. I chose to listen to that. I did not accept that kids or people would call me dirtball. I did not accept the fact that people said I was dumb as a box of rocks. I did not accept the fact that people said I wouldn't make it, wasn't good enough. People laughed at me. I didn't accept that. I chose to look at myself and say, you know what, I know what my mom said about me. My mom said, Tyson, you're special. Tyson, you're gonna change thousands of lives. Tyson, you're gonna do something amazing. And I don't know what it is, Tyson, but you have so much talent. You have so much ability. You can go and chase your dreams. I chose to accept that. Even though I had all these voices all around, I chose to listen to that one still, small, small voice. My mother's voice. I chose to listen to that voice. See, you have the ability to choose to accept or reject what anybody says about you. I'm telling you, you're a champion. I'm telling you, you're a winner. I'm telling you, you can go out and succeed at anything you want. The differentiating factor is if you are willing to do the work. And I know you are. If you stuck with me this long, I know you are. I know you're a champion. So choose to listen to what you are possible. Choose to listen to what the possibilities are for your life. Don't listen to these people who are trying to hate on you, trying to pull you back, trying to pull you. Don't listen to them. Just block them out. Say, nope, not happening. Water off and duck's back. I'm a champion. Nope, Ty said I'm a champion. Even if you were like me and you had multiple people telling you that you weren't going to make it. Say, nope, I heard one person tell me that I'm a champion. Tyson said it. My mom said it. My dad said it. My teacher said it. My cousin said it. Somebody told me that. I choose to hold on to that. And truth be honest, I had so much adversity coming up that it actually benefited me because God gave me the ability to be a fighter, okay? If I wasn't a fighter, I would have listened to him. I would have accepted. And it's time for you to be a fighter. It's time for you to be a champion. It's time for you to grow and go to the next level. And if you're a person who's struggling with getting the momentum and getting the ball rolling, I have something amazing for you. It's called the Cowboy Challenge. 
down in the description below. I want you to accept the challenge, the cowboy challenge, to give you momentum, to give you resiliency, to give you mental toughness, to go on and chase life. And you can check that out. There's also a ton of free stuff in the description below. And so I hope that you choose to listen to me when I tell you you are blessed, you are special, you are perfect, you are fast, you are an achiever. Whatever you lack now, you can gain in the future. I hope that you choose to listen to that. Don't listen to that negative voice. Don't listen to that negative people. Work on yourself. Continue to grow. And you know what? If you've got value out of this, share it with somebody else. Know that I'm on your side. Know that I think you're a champion. I think you're a winner. And know that your next level is literally, literally could be around the corner. It could be tomorrow that you make that shift, make that change, and go to the next level. So as always, much love. I appreciate you. And we'll talk soon. Take care.